Org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman as we turn now to Egypt, where violence in Tahrir Square began Friday, when one of several hundred peaceful protesters staging a sit-in outside the parliament building was reportedly detained and beaten by troops. Up to 14 people have been killed, hundreds injured over the last three days of clashes. A video uploaded yesterday on YouTube has circulated widely, provoked outrage at the extent of police brutality. A young woman is seen, is seen being dragged and beaten by military police. The top half of her body is bare, her blue bra exposed. Her abaya, or robe, has been ripped off and surrounds her upper body, showing that she was wearing a hijab. The violence has overshadowed the first parliamentary election since President Hosni Mubarak was ousted in February. According to Egypt's Higher Elections Committee, turnout was high for the second round. Egypt's two leading Islamist parties said yesterday they secured about three-quarters of votes, extending their lead in the three-stage vote, based on results of most districts. A source from the Muslim Brotherhood's Freedom and Justice Party said it was on track to win about 40 percent of the vote. Speaking at a news conference yesterday, the head of Egypt's High Elections Committee expressed regret of the incidents over the weekend. We announce to you the results of the first round of the second stage of the elections. We have experienced unfortunate circumstances, events that are incomprehensible. We ask God to welcome the martyrs into heaven and to give comfort and patience to their families and to give a quick recovery to the injured. To find out more about what's happening in Egypt, we're going to Cairo now to speak with Democracy Now!'s Sharif abdel -Kadus. Sharif, welcome back to Democracy Now! Talk about what happened this weekend. Well, Amir, we've seen a real escalation of violence uh, in the streets of downtown Cairo. Uh, after four days of clashes, at least 14 people are, are dead. Uh, more than 700 are wounded. Uh, 200 have been arrested. Uh, this all started really on Thursday night, early Friday morning, uh, when a sit-in that had been held in front of the offices of the uh, cabinet of the government of Kamal al Ghanzuri. Uh, and the parliament. Uh, that that sit-in began nearly a month ago in protest of the appointment of Kamal Ganzuri, who served as prime minister under Mubarak uh, and uh, was appointed uh, after Isam Sharaf, the former prime minister, resigned in the wake of previous clashes last month, uh, also in downtown Cairo, that led to the killing of uh, uh, up to 45 people. Uh, since that time, when those clashes died down, uh, we've seen uh, the elections begin uh, take place. Uh, as you mentioned, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, is uh, doing very well, uh, capturing about 40 percent of the seats. But we've also seen a crackdown on uh, activists that's not been reported widely. A uh, number of activists have been kidnapped uh, by security forces, uh, beaten, uh, interrogated, and then let go. Uh, so this is the context in which this was happening. And as you mentioned, a, a young uh, protester who was part of the sit-in by the name of Aboudi uh, was, uh, take, was captured uh, by uh, security forces, by armed forces, rather, the army. They took him into the parliament building and beat him severely for two hours. Uh, it's, if you look at the video of his face, I, I, when I first saw it, I thought he had died. Uh, his, his eyes are swollen shut and he's beaten very badly. Uh, so uh, when they dumped his body uh, on the street and he was, uh, people saw him, this uh, sparked uh, clashes with the armed forces. Uh, what happened was that the military began uh, attacking also protesters in a, in a very bizarre way, standing on the roof of the cabinet building, on the roof of the parliament, hurling down stones, throwing chairs. They threw a cabinet uh, down. They threw China on the protesters. And then uh, they, uh, protesters responded with rocks and sometimes Molotov cocktails. Uh, the army stormed the streets, uh, very b brutally beating people with wooden sticks. Uh, those who uh, did not get away or fell down were uh, beaten on the floor and then taken into the parliament building and abused some more. Uh, I saw people getting carried out, and this includes el elderly women, uh, women young and old being carried out, some of them beaten so badly they could hardly walk. Uh, so uh, this was the context of what, this, of, of ha what, what was happening. And uh, these clashes continued to escalate into uh, Saturday. And what happened on Saturday was uh, the army began to try and build a wall uh, on Asr al Aini Street, which leads to Parliament, which leads to Cabinet, which was the site of most of the protests. Uh, and they were partially building this wall, but uh, clashes broke out again. And the army uh, conducted a very, very brutal 
uh, raid into Tahrir and they forcibly moved the protesters and cleared all of Tahrir Square. Uh, I myself was there on the ground when it happened and was forced to run very fast. And this is uh, that video that you, that you mentioned and uh, you probably showed of that woman uh, being very brutally beaten by three or four soldiers, army soldiers on the ground, uh, being kicked, being stomped. Her abaya is ripped off and her uh, body and chest are exposed. Uh, other people are clearly shown on video being very brutally beaten. And let me just say, uh, when this happened, there was probably much more video evidence of people being uh, brutally beaten down, but uh, they're not available because the army, right after that uh, raid, entered the offices of most media outlets surrounding the square and confiscated equipment. The apartment that I ran into of a friend of mine uh, I thought we were filming from a balcony on the ninth floor. I suddenly found an army soldier on the balcony demanding the cameras. Uh, they took two of our cameras away. When I went down to try and retrieve them, I myself was almost arrested. And I saw other soldiers throwing uh, equipment from uh, Al Jazeera, who had rented a room, off the balcony into the streets. Uh, so uh, this, this was uh, a, a clampdown on, on the information, on, uh, on trying to prevent these kinds of, of pictures uh, from emerging. Uh, but as it stands right now, uh, the clashes continued. Uh, they built a third wall on Sheikh Rahan Street, which is uh, another street leading to Tahrir. Uh, so right now there's three walls uh, blocking and main arteries into Tahrir, the, the third one being one that was built last month. And it's almost as if uh, uh, the army and the Ministry of Interior and the government are on one side and the revolution is on the other. Uh, and they're being separated by, the, by these physical barriers. And uh, right just before we went to air, the Supreme Council of Armed Forces held a press conference uh, completely denying any wrongdoing, completely denying even the use of violence uh, against protesters uh, in contradiction to clear video evidence, uh, compl and saying that the people protesting uh, are not part of the revolution. And so, uh, and they, they also showed uh, video supposedly supporting their claims, even showing young children uh, apparently confessing to being forced uh, to, to engage in the protest, a really macabre scene uh, that had just unfolded on TV. So uh, th that's the context of what's happening right now, and it's taking place uh, as elections for uh, the parliament are supposedly underway. Sharif, talk about the significance of these elections. Uh, talk about the Salafis, the Muslim Brotherhood, taking the enormous lead that they have, especially the Salafis surprising many. And who are the people who are protesting in Tahrir? Well, the people are protesting. Uh, many of them are the people who uh, started this revolution on January 25th. Many of them are the people that protested for years leading up to it. Uh, many of them are uh, angry youth that, that, the, that the revolution has been stolen from them. I mean, if we look at what happened uh, since January 25th when this, whole, uh, when this revolution began, uh, n really none of the revolutionary demands have been uh, completed. Uh, the security forces have not, been, uh, have not been reformed. No police officer has been put on trial or, or any soldier put on trial for killing of protesters. Uh, and that these revolutionary demands for bread, freedom of social justice, people feel have all but been abandoned. And so um, uh, that, that's what, what, what many of the people are calling for. And let me just say that of these 200 people, nearly 200 people who are uh, in detention right now, they're being accused uh, of crimes of inciting violence and burning buildings. Many of them have, been, are, have broken arms, are very badly beaten, they're being refused medical attention, and one of them actually just died uh, after being refused medical attention. And so this is happening while the army is claiming that, that, that no violence is being conducted. And one of the people who was killed, actually, uh, m let me add also, uh, most of these people who have died, of the 14 who have died, most of them have been killed by live ammunition. And one of them was uh, a sheikh from Al-Azhar, which is the most important religious institution in Egypt. He was the chief of staff to the Grand Mufti, and uh, he was killed. And uh, on Saturday, there was a very massive uh, m burial service for him, and a, a massive march that came to Tahrir as well. Uh, so this is a, a serious development in and of itself. And but with regards to the elections, uh, as you mentioned, this... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, just with regard to the elections, as you mentioned, the Muslim Brotherhood has captured about 40 percent of the seats. The real surprise has been the ultra-conservative uh, Salafis, who uh, have made very big gains, uh, and uh, liberal parties have come a very, very distant third, and revolutionary youth parties have uh, captured uh, almost a negligible amount. 
Um, the Muslim Brotherhood has not uh, really participated in these protests whatsoever. Uh, they want the elections to go forward as planned because they stand to gain the most from them. And they are being uh, very uh, severely accused by the revolutionary youth of political opportunism uh, in the face of uh, a real clampdown by the army uh, 10 months after this revolution began. This was the weekend, Sharif, the first anniversary of Mohamed Bouazizi, the Tunisian uh, man who was who self-immolated, uh, protesting the authorities cracking down on him and the lack of opportunity in Tunisia, burning himself to death. Was there a marking of this in Egypt? Many say that um, Mohamed Bouazizi's act sparked the Tunisian revolution, which sparked the Egyptian revolution, which sparked so many uh, uprisings around the country, around the world, and in this country as well, Occupy Wall Street. Well, it was certainly noted. I mean, this uh, the anniversary came in the midst, of, really in the midst of these very violent clashes. I think people noted and paid respects uh, to Mohammed Bouazizi uh, as a martyr of uh, of the revolutions uh, that began. Uh, but that I think many people here in Egypt feel are very much largely unfinished. And uh, the fact that 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 the road leading to parliament, that the road leading to the cabinet and to uh, the people's assembly that is being elected right now is uh, was being people were standing on top of it and, and soldiers were throwing and attacking protesters from on top this building that 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 uh, that hundreds Five of seconds. people were held in the parliament building and beaten and tortured uh, and that there's a wall separating people from these buildings I think says a lot about where the revolution is and where it has to go democracy now Shrufa Bokadus, thank you so much.